you know, I used to, uh, I used to want everything, and now I know I don't need everything. It's a total feeling of comfort everywhere that you go. This place has everything to change your life. A place where miracles happen. 177 men on the campus of Graymore and Garrison, New York, all being reshaped, remolded, and regifted back to their families and loved ones through the dedication and support of the Franciscan Friars at St. Christopher's Inn. They're here, they love us, they're not here for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, they're here because, you know, they care about us and that's, that's overwhelming to me. They give you a glimpse into w what you're meant to be, the man that you're supposed to be and that it's okay to be who you are. You know, I was spiritually bankrupt when I got here and um, now uh, my whole outlook, you know, Father Bill, Father John, Father Angel, I mean, these, they, they made me really look at things the way, you know, it, it was, not the way I thought it, it thought it was. Father Bill is the executive director of St. Christopher's Inn, a haven that began 103 years ago with one man who came upon a Franciscan friar back in 1909. And he was in the process of building a chicken coop. And he said to the man, well, if you help me turn this into a little cabin, I'll give you room and board if you help me around the mountain. And that's the first St. Christopher's Inn. And from there, word of mouth spread, and one modest cabin turned into a haven for men suffering from addiction to drugs and alcohol. I was using drugs, and I bought drugs for somebody, and um, my journey led me here. My girlfriend, she died uh, from a heart attack, and I started drinking again. But through structure and unconditional love and support, the facility grew to nurture and reveal the inner soul of each man through programs, activities, and faith. There's a big studio here. So once a week, each group has group therapy in the art room. I mean, look at the work there. That kid drew all those bricks one by one. I couldn't make a straight line like that, you know? But it shows that spirit sending these men to us and depicting two friars coming out to welcome them. This is where the men eat. What we did about a year ago, enlarged this room a little. Where I'm standing used to be the dish room, but we moved the back further and kind of reconfigured space mm -hmm. because we were serving two breakfasts, two lunch, two dinners, and it was just too much. And this is our chapel, Charlie. I think I mentioned we have nine friars that live here at St. Christopher's Inn, so we have our, our morning uh, liturgy here every morning. No man is obliged to come, but a number of men do come to celebrate with us. And you see all the chairs up there, we have a choir. The men volunteer to sing in the choir. Right now I think I have about 37 men singing. I can have a Jewish boy singing and I question them. I say, why would you want to be part of this? And they look me right in the eyes and says, oh Father, it has nothing to do with my religion. This has to do with my spirituality. I feel closer to Yahweh if I'm here doing this stuff. So. And through this spirituality, men are finding their true meaning and true self a portal, if you will, of which men come out better than they entered. They say, leave it up here. You know, leave your stuff on the holy mountain. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing. And uh, like I said, it's been a long time since I've been smiling and I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. It's pretty amazing how they leave it up to us to do it too. You know, we rely on one another. One another. That sense of unity is uh, it's pretty strong. It's a powerful thing. At a recent board of directors dinner, several hundred people attended to support the ongoing mission and to honor those who have cause to help St. Christopher's through donation and volunteerism. Regis Philbin is one of the honorees tonight, <laughs> uh, guest of honor, and it's got to be a proud moment for you, but for a good cause. I tell you, it's a terrific cause. I, uh, first of all, I'm back in Botanical Gardens. I grew up right down the street here. But Charlie, you know, I, I began to, uh, to read more and more about what's going on up there at Graymore. And, uh, Fantastic story. The fundraiser on this night at the Botanical Garden was designed to grow awareness and support for the shelter. The shelter part of St. Christopher's Inn, completely funded by private donations. There's no public funding from the state. It's truly a uh, privately funded part of the inn. These men are receiving food, shelter, clothing, 365 days a year. It's a great program because the men have the benefit of living in a supportive, structured environment where they can go to treatment every day. And they also get to know what's the goodness within themselves. They learn their spirituality and skills for going back out into the world as a sober person. Not every man who enters comes out the way we would hope, but every man that enters the shelter 
is profoundly affected. Don Amen had two sons go through the program and became a board member as a way to show his appreciation and gratitude for what the center did for his sons. My younger son went through the St. Christopher's Inn program uh, actually twice, and I credit the Inn with saving his life. Uh, he eventually died as a result of his, uh, his abuse. However, uh, in the last months, there was a real change in him, and uh, he just—he was starting to actually make a difference in other people's lives before he died. And I and I credit this program with having made such a difference to him that, you know, I, I say he saved, they, it saved his life. Couldn't prevent him from dying, but it saved his life before he did. Michael Elms, the chairman of Rolex, also felt the need to give back. I grew up in the Bronx. I've seen everything that these men have gone through. I've been lucky in life, and you feel you have to give something back. And it is miracles that happen. And the miracles that happen on that mountain have inspired so many to volunteer and support. I think this is a wonderful organization. And these Franciscan friars have done a job that really, it's a, it's a movie. I'll tell you that, that's what, you and me, Charlie. <laughs> But the story is not only about how the men get through the program, but how they continue to come back as role models. Most people leave treatment programs and you can hear the tires screeching. Our alumni come back. Our alumni come back to us every week. But for now, George, James, and Warren can't wait to see the reaction of the families that are waiting for them to return home. <laughs> well, uh, first off, I'm about 40 pounds heavier, you know. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, they'll see uh, a much more content, content and happy man. I, uh, I was struggling for a long time. I was, I was clean for five years. And um, it was, they showed me that there's a difference between sobriety and life and just living clean, you know. So uh, they'll definitely, they'll, they'll get a sense of happiness and love off of me, for sure. I can't wait to see him. I see myself taking it slow and, and being happy, being a better father. I mean, I'm going to get upset. I'm human. You know, but I think, uh, I think everybody in my family is going to see a new me, you know, thanks to St. Christopher's. Anger bro brought me in here, right? But love is going to bust me out of here, you know, and that's how I'm looking at this thing. You know, I'm feeling great.